Marco, la bon dia, alegria to you. Hi, good morning. How are you? I'm sound. I, I'm I'm great, and you're sounding amazing. Very. Yeah, I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm in Sintra, so the, this is the the garden. See, okay, now it's better. Okay. Well, tell us about that first of all, if you will, Marco. Marco Areas, who I know from the Storytellers Palace here in uh, San Martino de Porto. But in conversation with you, uh, Marco, I discover that you're a, a, originally a hotelier in Sintra there, where you, where you happen to be sitting. Tell us about that uh, venue there, if you will. Yeah, this is our first project. Uh, we opened, uh, we bought the property in 19, uh, no, in 2018, and uh, we rebuilt it like we did with the uh, Storytellers Palace. We opened in 2019, and now it's uh, five, uh, four years. And um, it's a different concept. It's a concept with villas, because in Sintra, we found out that many families we visit, visited us didn't have places for the kids, because the hotels didn't have connected rooms, and uh, it was quite uh, difficult to uh, lodge families. So we opened it, and it has been a success. And after that, we enjoy it, and we decided to open another one at north, and it happened in San Martino do Porto. It's amazing. <laughs> You, you enjoyed it, so you opened another one. Yes. <laughs> that, that really... you know, only the crazy people love it, you know. <laughs> you, make, you make it sound so simple. And what a, lovely, what a lovely idea to respond to a public demand. I think Martin Yala are a little bit like that in the Algarve. I think, uh, who was it? Uh, Chitra and Roman Stern. They they were when they had kids. They were they were in five star hotels. I think in luxury hotels with their young children, and um, everyone was looking at them like, you know, what are those children doing in here? And they didn't <laughs> feel, they didn't feel welcome anymore like they used to. So they built their own hotel that was family friendly, and it sounds like you've done a very similar thing there. Yes, 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 and everybody because. Portuguese, the Portuguese families have um, usually one kid, but the, the Americans or the uh, uh, North Europeans, they have three and four kids. And yeah. it's quite difficult to lodge them. So we have a, a yard with a pond with, uh, with turtles and fishes and lemon trees. So the kids play around safety because it's, 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 it's gated. And um, and then they end the center, of, the center of Sintra. And because we are storytellers, we tell stories the most um, mysterious stories about Sintra. So, and they enjoy it. Then we have, uh, they call the kids call uh, House Tree, that is the restaurant with all glass that's facing the mountain. And um, so it's a nice experience for families. Fantastic. So is it is it a hotel in the sense that you're catering for people or is it more of an Airbnb style? No, it's a, it's, it's a different concept. It's, a, it's not... Yet the guest house, we are, we belong to the small Portuguese hotels chain, and the, the idea is to make you feel at home. But after five p.m., you are by your own, so okay. we are not there. So we provide all um, the facilities for the guests. We serve breakfast, and we do the housekeeping like a normal hotel, and we do the check-ins. And usually, when, when the house is is is, is finished with the check-ins. We close the gates and the people are by their own because they are villas. They have everything. They have a kitchen. They have, they have a room. They have a living room. They have, they have the gardens. They have all, all the facilities. So they don't need to be bothered by the owners. And because it's only six units, this didn't make any sense to put a person there like a police guy. So it's, I think the people feel better being by their own and being free uh, and safe than being someone looking uh, all the time if they need. Because we need, we live nearby. Uh, sometimes they forget something, so they can call us and we provide whatever they need. Sometimes yeah. they they want wine or something because they forgot. And because it's a villa, sometimes they don't know that we have it. Usually they ask us at night, "Do you know where I can buy the bottle of wine?" I said, "Yes, we're going to be there in five minutes, and you can have it the wine." Yeah, <laughs> perfect. That sounds wonderful, especially when you've been busy with kids all day. Um, yeah. Sounds excellent. And is it called the Sintra Storytellers then, or is it got a different yes, name? Storytellers Villas? Yeah, it's the yeah the short the the the, the uh, suffix name is uh, Villas. Okay, so it's, it's the storyteller's concept unfolding um, across yeah. Portugal here, and uh, most recently in San Martino yeah. de Porto where this ultimate um, wine tasting is happening. And you could be forgiven for thinking one wine tasting is much like another. Um, however, this is a pretty extraordinary event uh, that you're, you're hosting, I believe, on the 8th of November. Tell us about it, please, Marco. Okay, so 
um, our idea, because we had experience in doing wine uh, dinners in Lisbon, uh, in Oitavos, Quinta da Marinha, we, I decided to go up and try to do something uh, different, because in, in Lisbon it's more kind of a club already, because we have around 200 people belonging to the to the club, but uh, and they do networking and so on. And at North ID is people to meet themselves too, but making networking, but the experiences go a bit above and beyond. How? The idea is we invite the best winemaker. It's Rui Cunha from uh, um, uh, a very a nice house case that is Lim Smith. And the idea is to give you a night of entertainment with wine. How? He's going to present his productions, and then you're going to do a quiz about everyone's palate. What does it, what does it mean? So we have a eight course meal. We start with a cocktail with different foods, canopies, uh, uh, sushi, um, and another ones that I cannot tell you now. And you have to guess what is the ingredient of the first wine. So you have six options and you drink and then you're going to close your eyes and make you remind what this taste uh, remind me of. The best palate wins a collection of wine. And it goes through all the menus. So then we have the starter. So it's a, a, a fish starter. Then it's uh, the, the main course fish, two, two uh, main course for meat and two desserts and then the coffee. Uh, and how it's going to happen? You're going to experience all the difference between glasses. For instance, if you can drink one wine in different kind of shapes of, of glasses and the taste changes uh, in a way that I, I even, even me, I couldn't believe it. And another nice thing that he's going to do is he's going to bring a harvest from this year that it's going to be in a inox Cuba and he's going to give, a, 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 give you to taste and then put the, uh, the same uh, um, kind of caster, but in a five years uh, barrel already. So you can test the different how the wine can evaluate. And then uh, you're going to do an experience with monocasts because the French love monocasts and ideas with different monocasts that you are drinking. Then the winemaker is going to ask you to, to mix different casters and make your own wine. And it's a beautiful experience. Uh, it's because amazing. It's incredible. Yeah, so the idea is to spend a different night interacting with a winemaker and um, enjoy yourselves with good wines and good and good food because I'm going to cook. <laughs> I'm the chef. The, this is this is going to be an amazing evening. You've, have, yeah. you, you have to get a lot of glasses in, Mark. I was just doing some maths there. If if there are, is, did you say there are eight wines to try? Is it eight or nine? It's not, no, it's nine wines. Nine wines. No, actually, it's ten because we're going to make an, a diff, another experience in between. It's we have a biologic, a hundred percent wine that we're going to call clean your palate. So in between the fish and the meat course you're going to try a 100% biological wine. That is a nice experience too. And you have to drink it at that time because it doesn't last. So you have to open and drink it. And then in the end, you have a special spirit too with the coffee so uh, that they're going to bring and they're going to uh, tell you about how they make that spirit out of the the the, 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 the rest of the the, the 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 grapes that they are left for the wine. So it's, it's, it's already... Ten wines and one spirit. Incredible! What an evening. We are not. Oh, that's why you. Are, if you feel a bit drunk, you can sleep there. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's handy. And, yeah. um, I mean, it, this is going to be an education as much as anything. Yeah. It's going to be fun. It's going to be informative, and I think this is going to be the kind of wine tasting, wine pairing experience that um, a lot of people may not have had. Um, certainly, I've never I've never done anything like this, and and just the idea of being able to taste the grapes close to pressing, and then get a sense of those same grapes from that same um, place of production yeah. of growing as as a, as a five year old wine will be incredible, won't it, to try on the night? And then you're talking about the um, mo the uh, monocast, which is a single single grape variety. I mean, what happens in Portugal is we get a lot of mixtures, don't we? A lot of blends. Yeah. Uh, here in Portugal, which is not a bad thing necessarily, but there is a certain cachet, isn't there, about having a single varietal wine. Yeah. And you're going to be able to try a, a single varietal Portuguese wine. One is Portuguese and one is French. Yeah, that's one true. And but, but do a bit of blending as well on the night. It's, what, yeah. How incredible, how incredible. So what's, and, have you met Rui then? What's he like? 
Rui is, is great because he, he is a very intelligent man. He speaks several languages and his expert, expertise is, is amazing because just listening to him for 10 minutes, uh, you want to stay with him the whole day because what you think that you know by your experience, you don't know yeah. nothing. It's, 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 no. it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a world, you know. And then what was nice is it, it taught me how to, because we had to do the menu and we spent like two hours putting wine in, uh, uh, in your mouth and then close your eyes, silence, and try to get memories about what the, the test uh, reminds you of. And it's amazing because it's quite difficult, but mm -hmm. after a while you can get it. It takes long, but if you have, if you have a good palate, it, it, it comes to you and then, and then you decide. So the first dish is this ingredient has to be put on so you can make the same kind of taste and goes with the wine in the, so in, in the, so, such a good way. I tried then to um, make testing with, with food and it changes everything. You, know, you do the wine pairing changes everything. The wine um, gets more, um, if you, I don't know the word, but it gets, 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 um, Deeper, you know, better, you know, in, 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 when you drink the wine with the, the nice, with the correct dish, you say this wine is fantastic. So it empowers the the wine. It's it's, it's it's amazing. It's greater than the sum of the parts, I suppose, isn't it? And, yeah. and that that is to me, it sounds like mindful wine tasting, taking it to a new level. And, yeah. and you say that you know, if you've got a good palate, I think a lot of people can't be blamed for having not a very good palate, if you like, because they haven't been educated in this. And here's, that's here's, true. Here's a chance to get a better palate or a deeper appreciation of wine. Um, and the, the, the it's mainly Portuguese wine, is that correct? That will be yes, it's, it's from the... They have the two or three houses in north of Portugal and it's product, all the wine is, is made by him. Incredible. The winemaker of the year from uh, 2022 yeah. from last year. So what a wonderful evening that's going to be. And, um, of course, you can stay over us. I mean, certainly nobody should be driving away from that event. Um, they should get public transport or a taxi or stay overnight at the uh, Storytellers Palace in San Martino de Porto, which I've been delighted to learn more about recently. Um, we've started this new uh, professional networking fourth Wednesday. Thank you so much, Marco. Let me thank you publicly for your excellent hospitality last Wednesday. What a lovely, what a lovely event that was. Okay, thank you, <laughs> thank you, and you are always welcome. You know, it it, it was superb. Now um, we're also going to be filming with you uh, this coming Saturday afternoon. We've got our Englishman, Irishman, and you, the Portuguese man, mm -hmm. uh, who we're talking to. We walk into a bar, happens to be your own bar, the Gatsby Bar, and this gentleman is possibly going to be there as well. This is your wonderful cocktail mixer, Luis. He's a bit of a star, isn't he? Yes, yes. <laughs> he, 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 uh, we joke with him because he, he loves so much his profession that we say that he, he has OCD, you know. <laughs> he's so, he's so I'm, I'm obsessed, with, obsessed yeah. with the detail of making cocktails. And there's one of his fine creations there. I think that's the Bloomsbury um, a Bruce, uh, Booster, I think. Um, anyway, yes. it was whatever it was called, it was absolutely delicious. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and, and there will be uh, something you can imagine yourself sat at the bar there. Some people, some of our extras in our filming probably will be sat at the bar uh, nonchalantly and, and coolly uh, ordering cocktails uh, from Luis there. Um, we're looking forward to talking to you, Marco, about uh, your, your past, which is quite an amazing one. Um, the, you took us right back to when you were a kid. Um, and you said you grew up in kitchens. Are you so you're from a hospitality background with your your grandparents? Yeah, yeah business, my right? parents had restaurants, and oh, okay. uh, I was I was brought up in restaurants. And I I, I when I was a kid, I said I will never have a restaurant. This is a nightmare. You know. <laughs> and now look. <laughs> yeah. They had no life, you know, they had to work uh, 24 seven. And I said, no, because my father, when I was 12, he uh, made me during the summer, the, the, the summer holidays to work with him. So at the time I didn't understand why. If everybody's playing football, why am I here? Yeah. And then now you understand because he was a really good PR and seller. So you learn a lot by uh, being with guests, and uh, knowing what is uh, good for them and for your business and make these uh, 
this kind of blend. And um, I learned a lot to, with him. But then I, 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 did, I decided not to go for restoration because it was a nightmare, as I told you. So I went to another nightmare that was film. So I went to London to study. <laughs> you chose a different nightmare. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. Can I ask you a bit about that? Uh, do you mind talking about your, yeah, your, no. your film and TV background? Because when I first came to Portugal, um, something that I found very educational and even comforting, actually, was um, Philippa Gormish in the kitchen yeah. um, cooking. And I later discovered in conversation with you that you created, pretty much created that series, did you not? For, for yes, I was, I was flying uh, to Varso because I, I did a big bank in Portugal called Millennium BCP. I was responsible for the branding and the, the, the television and all the commercials and internal communication. And I was doing um, editing a, a commercial for American Express. And on my side was a guy looking at me all the time and... Uh, after 20 minutes uh, from takeoff, uh, around that, I, I opened the computer, started editing, and the guy was looking and then suddenly said, are you in the movie business? He said, yeah, kind of. He, uh, and he said, what are you doing? He said, I'm editing a commercial for American Express. Oh, quite interesting. Um, and said, but are, are you in the business too? He said, yes, yes, I am. Uh, what do you do? Oh, I'm the CEO of uh, National Geographic. And I said, where? He said, over the world. I said, oh. Oh, oh, quite interesting. Oh, <laughs> what are you doing from uh, flying from Portugal to? I was stopping at Schiphol in Netherlands. So oh, we are getting in a new channel. It's called Twenty Four Kitchen, and it's um, we don't know if we're going to keep the brand. The contents are interesting, but the channel is not profitable in Netherlands. So you're going to take over, but we don't know what you're going to do. If we're going to stay just with the contents, or we're going to get the brand and develop it. And I said, look, um, if you want, you can. Do a pitch with me because we opened seven channels in Portugal. So we, I was responsible for TV Cine, Hollywood, Panda, Panda Big, Cinemundo, and um, we did it with the Nosh for a long time. So I said, "Oh, really?" So we exchanged contacts, and I never heard from him again. And one and a half months later, he, he, I received an email asking me if I was ready for a meeting in Lisbon at Avenida Liberdade with Fox. I said, "Okay." So I met them, and they said, "Look." Uh, he showed me the project. Oh, he got a bit of a freeze there from Marco. Uh, oh, here he is. He's back now. He said, uh, we want to develop uh, uh, the project in Portugal because we are off. But can you hear me? Okay. okay. And then he said, um, okay. So uh, he, he said, we want to make a test in Portugal. If, if it works, we're going to then uh, release it in all Europe. So um, I said, how much money do you have? He said, one million euros for three months. I said, okay. So um, I suggest them to start with some talents in Portugal that are not famous. He said, why do you want people that are not famous? Because I want characters. If you can find the right character, it's going to uh, uh, be more successful than put chefs working in the, at, at uh, cooking because the people don't relate with them. It's, they're going to find it's quite difficult to do what they do. They found it quite interesting and said, so what are you thinking doing? I said, a casting, national casting. And then we can choose from the best storyteller. So we did the casting, we received 200, 240 uh, uh, films, videos with people cooking, and uh, Filippa was one of those. And when I look at her, I said, with the glasses and with the uh, pinup girl style, I said, she looks like Minnie. She's going to be a, a su successful if she can deliver the story. So she went to the studio. We did a test, a camera test with, with her. And suddenly I said, this is the girl. So I took uh, to Fox and they said, mm, it's quite strange. The people, it, it, she's weird. They said, yes, that's why it's going to be good. Because <laughs> When, when when you launch her, lots of people are going to love her and lots of people are going to hate her. And the community in uh, uh, in in Facebook and Instagram going to be... So the, the orange one is the first... is the, the orange picture with the background is the first uh, series, yeah. And, um, and the, uh, they were a bit confused about what I was uh, trying to do, but then was a lady said, he's right, let's do it. Let's try it. We are doing a pitch show. We have to spend the money. Let's do it. So yeah. I started doing, and we had no sponsors. And after, uh, uh, I think, the third week, we had more um, viewers than Sick Noticias. And then Intermarché 
uh, call us that he wanted to sponsor the show. And then uh, uh, Vaqueiro, and then Knorr, and then uh, Crusset, and then Margão. And then, then uh, suddenly we had like 7.5 million euros in sponsoring. So it was, was a huge su success. Then we had Tia Katia, then we had Sandra Nobre, and then we started adding normal ladies to uh, uh, the, the the channel. So and was uh, success. And I left when Disney bought uh, Fox. So because they have Shine and they have Animal and they have the big ones, so it didn't make any sense for them to spend money. So we negotiate a, a success fee, and now they are doing the format, but it was developed by by me. In 2012 was the first the first it's edition. Amazing, amazing. Uh, yeah, you, you clearly have a gift for for, for uh, visualizing these things and imagining things and then bringing them to people's attention. And and this, you know, similarly in that way, seeing that what Portuguese people might prefer is a is a down to earth a, a person with a bit of X factor and a bit of, a bit of star quality, but, yeah. but someone they could relate to, not a celebrity chef. I mean, that was genius, wasn't it? To think, okay. Portuguese people are not going to be impressed by a celebrity chef. They want somebody down to earth and they want to be able to try it themselves at home. Yes, and they, they what they like it most in the beginning was nice, was telling that, uh, Flipper, you are doing it wrong. I do it better. And <laughs> I bet. That's, that's yeah. so Portuguese. Yes. Yeah. No, that's, yeah. So uh, 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 the communities uh, at Facebook and Instagram was, were huge. And yeah. then we discovered, we did a study with, with, with uh, uh, an auditor and the the kids uh, were a big audience because they thought she was mini, and they yeah. said because the 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 the, the, the premiere was always at nine, so nine p.m. And during the summer, that because we launched in the summer, the kids go to bed later, so the kids used to watch Flipper. So in some of them, they look she looks like mini with the glasses and with the, the skirt, so they. They related with that. So some of them called the uh, the mini flipper. So uh, and was a huge success through the the kids. So some moms told us my kids, uh, my the girl kids watch a, a flipper while they are dinner. So it was quite nice. So instead of being the news, it was Flipper Gomes. <laughs> you launched the role model possibly there as well. And, and even for a foreigner like me, it was just so reassuring to see her cooking like you know ho home. Food you'd eat at home on, on, on the screen. It was superb. So amazing. Wonderful story there, uh, Marco. Uh, we've got one of your customers here, I think. Um, if you are ever in Sintra, says John, as well, Donald, Pam and I enthusi enthusiastically recommend the Storytellers Villas Hotel, walking distance to many sites. That's wonderful. And someone's created a poem for you. Marco, the storyteller, and his stories must be told. He has many stories, tells for both the young and old. And we're hoping to hear... <laughs> a few of those when we talk to you on Saturday. That's me and Bobby O'Reilly who tuned in in Lisbon this morning. Sounds amazing. I think he's talking about your upbringing um, yeah. and being, being in the restaurant business as a kid. And sounds familiar because he grew up in a in a, his his father was a baker, and they also are um, in the hospitality and restaurant business as well. So you'll have much in common uh, when we talk on Saturday. So what made you, I mean, you said, Marco, never, I'm never doing that. I'm not going to, you know, my parents don't have a life. I, I'd rather have been playing football than um, being stuck working for my dad in, in the kitchen or in the restaurant. How is it you've come full circle and have ended up being in the kitchen and not only in the kitchen, but running hotels as well? Yes. Uh, yeah, I decided for this hotel because it was quite difficult to find, you know, San Martino, that's a problem. Before, I I never been in San Martino before. I was doing a documentary about for Europe about uh, the interior of Portugal, and the the, uh, the guest is a very uh, is a politician in Portugal, is uh, the vice president of Cascais uh, Council, and we were doing um, a documentary for Europe about the interior of Portugal because it's quite undeveloped. And uh, we lack uh, training uh, uh, connections and universities and jobs and people. And then he decided, said to me, Marco, would be interesting for for us to speak about the interior of Portugal, but on the literal. What's what do you mean? Because there is some cities in the literal that they are interior because they lack all of this. I said, oh, would be interesting. So we decided to do uh, Obidos and Nazare, and I passed through San Martinho because I didn't know San Martinho. And I did also the Volant from SIC with cars. So I said, how oh, I never came here before I met the restaurant. So um, 
when I uh, uh, opened the, the hotel and started getting the crew, I could not find chefs to go to San Martinho because it's, they had to have a car. It takes two, one and a half hour to get to Lisbon. You have to have a house there. There is no houses in San Martinho to rent because everybody wants to rent it for summer. So it was quite difficult. Yeah, it was quite very, very difficult. So um, I had some famous uh, chefs with us, Kiko, uh, um, um, we had an, um, another one from Romania that is quite famous. Uh, I don't recall the name now. And he went, he went there. And the problem was always how he could get people there. So I said, I have to make my team. So because I know how to cook and because I did more than 2,500 shows in TV, I said, I'm going to... I'm going to produce uh, the, uh, the menu and I'm going to do the executive chef. So I hired people from around. I have one sous chef that came from Dubai and I'm going to teach them um, what I want. And now they can do, I'm, I'm here with you. They were there, at, they are there at the hotel and they can do what, what I taught them and it's coming out uh, 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 really good. So um, I decided because I had no option because otherwise I wouldn't open the hotel at the time that I wanted because uh, it's quite difficult to get someone to, to be out of the main cities. It's terrible. That's yeah, the yeah. problem with Portugal. You know, everybody thinks in Portugal everything is far because we lack transportation, proper transportation. Because in the United States or uh, in big countries, you can sometimes people work, or, or even in England, there is people living in Kent and work in London. In yeah. Portugal, it's impossible, you know? <laughs> if, you, if you think that you live in somewhere in New York in Lisbon, it's a nightmare, it's 100 kilometers, that in normal country would be done by train in a half an hour, it, it takes three hours to go from train, from Somerton to Sintra, it's a nightmare. Yeah, and this yeah. is a pity because um, if we could have better connections, you would develop all that coast that is, when we did the research, it goes through 2.5 million people and they don't stay there, you know? That's true. Yes, yeah, so it's such a true thing, isn't yeah. it? I mean, that's Portugal generally. This whole yeah. problem of people flying into Porto and leaving out of Lisbon for a three-day weekend. You know, they're, never, they're not staying long enough, are they? Yeah. And you make like now, I don't know if you read... Yesterday came out the new that United is flying from New York to Faro. Why? Yes. Because it was because going from Lisbon to to Lagos is a nightmare. Yes. Because when my guests say I want to go to Lagos, how long it takes by train? You know, they say four hours. They said what? Yeah. <laughs> sometimes you have to swap trains in the middle of it's it's four hours. It's it's two hundred yeah. kilometers and twenty five. No. Four hours, yeah. Probably because of that, you now we have people flying direct to Faro because it's a nightmare. It, that's that's, that's so a problem. interesting, Marco. So interesting, yeah. yeah. And if well, if I've got anything to do it, do with it. I will get people to the Storytellers Palace and learn more about San Martino, even if I have to drive them here myself. Um, so we we'll look forward to seeing you at the weekend. Thank you for telling Thank us you. about the wine tasting event. That's on the eighth of November. We'll see you on the fourth in the afternoon, yeah. and we'll look forward to. Uh, to talking with you about your life, your hotel, and uh, eating some of your delicious food, I hope, on Saturday afternoon. And uh, we'll see you soon, and we wish you all the best with the most beautiful project that you've created. And clearly, it looks to me like you can't help but see a vision, and then you have to deliver it, don't you? That's what happened yeah. with the San Martino Storytellers yeah. Palace, I think. Yeah. Thank you so much. Massive round of applause for you, and we'll see you soon. Cheers, Marco. Have a great day.